This episode of The Marketing Show is brought to you by Quest, New Zealand's most respected digital marketing agency, where marketing is made easy. Welcome to The Marketing Show, a show specifically dedicated to help marketers learn and succeed. In this episode, you'll meet Tim Eagle, director of Shacky Optometrists. It's a really interesting story. They're a hundred year old business that are continuing to see tremendous success. Tim, thanks so much for being part of the marketing show today. We know you're really busy and we appreciate your time. Um, perhaps first of all, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in optometry? Sure thing. Happy to be here, Hamish. And uh, it's a story of mine that goes back to when I was just 10 years old. Uh, the, I remember it vividly where the, uh, the teacher's word of the week was occupation and uh, well, I did a study and a project to work out what my occupation was going to be. I looked it up on the dictionary and discovered it could be a vocation. So I decided to interview five different people. The dental nurse next door, my mum who's a teacher, the panel beater down the road, the doctor that week because my brother was sick and my dad who's an optometrist. Put all the numbers together spat out down the bottom, I made a decision as a 10 year old and I said to my teacher, I've worked out what my occupation will be, it will be an optometrist. Of course she was mortified, she didn't think that I should be making a lifelong decision at that small project for the week, but it stuck and I became a dream driven person since then. And so uh, every decision along the journey of my life from then became, does it get me closer to becoming an optometrist or further? And so because of that simple deciding factor, uh, easy to beeline to become an optometrist. Fantastic. Well, it's nice to know what you want to do from an early age. Yeah. Many people don't, and it becomes a mystery even into later life, can't it? Oh. So, so it's nice to have that drive. And, it's a, it's and a little purpose. bit odd. It's a little bit odd to have that, and that's okay. But um, I knew that I wanted to be a part of the exciting business of optometry that my dad was. And so coming back to be a part of the family business was something that I felt very uh, loyal to, something that really resonated with me as a person. Right, well that leads us really nicely into Shacky Optometrists and, and what this business does. What do you think is unique and different about Shacky? We are a practice that has been a family orientated business for the last 120 something years. The original Mr Shacky who started the business with Mr Weber uh, started it in 1899. Uh, they were the pharmacist and the optometrist together, working uh, closely alongside each other. They ended up cross-training in each other's fields, and that's how the start of the practice became. Uh, we've been on Russell Street for the last 120 years. We're down a bit that way at one point, and they were on the corner with the, before the 31 earthquake, and, and we've shifted into this location we're at now since the early 70s done some massive renovations along the journey, but the history of the business as it stands was Mr. Shatke's two sons became optometrists. So two things there, one is you've got a really unique and long history which most businesses don't have. Yes. Secondly, it was a family business from the start and that's carried on today. Yeah, so after Mr. Shatke's two sons became optometrists, uh, Mr. Donaldson joined on and his son became an optometrist as well and joined on. And Mr. Eagle, became an optometrist, and his son, that's me, joined on as well. So what do you think is the benefit of a family business? What's so great about that? How does that really help things? I think what I've seen being a massive advantage is the trust we have in each other. They say blood is thicker, and I think it is. Doesn't always mean it's easy, but I think we've had a really fantastic run of good relationships between the families, the father and sons, we've all been able to work next to each other in a really positive way. A lot of people say, geez Tim, how can you work with your old man? I'm like, well, I've been working alongside him for 13 years. I don't get sick of it. I've still got things to learn. I'm having a great time. Yeah, no, that's good, isn't it? Mm. I, I think the thing we see in the marketplace potentially is some friction around those very close relationships whereby you challenge one another, but if that's done in the right way, that can be very, very positive for yeah. a business, can't it? And a good father-son relationship knows how to work with each other, and, and I think that's what we've got. It's really cool. Mm. But at the same time, I've been able to blossom as a practitioner, as a business owner, and have my own position on things and be, but be supported. It's been really cool. But one other really cool thing about being the family orientated business aspect is the ability for us to talk about this 
all days, any hour of the day, any family meeting. Now that might be bad for the rest of the family and we do limit the discussion points, but we have a chance to crunch things and collate and collaborate over the weekends, the weeknights, just because we automatically do. And that is difficult to have with a person that you're not that close with. So just the fact that you can deep dive uh, yeah, it helps you problem solve. I think so. Uh, so the only problem there is talking shop too much yeah. right around the family. So we have a little wee thing. We have a little wee thing. And that's when there's a code word and it is, we're sick of talking about business now. We want to talk about everything. The team know, the family know. They can, they can pin us down pretty quick nowadays and we, we peel off it. But. Mm. So Tim, what's unique about Shatke's delivery? What, what I found really interesting in working with you in the past is, yes. is to discover the specialist areas you've got. Now you've got one that you're personally really passionate about, haven't you? One of the special things that we have at Shatke's is various pillars of uniqueness that our business can offer to our patients as specialty services that others don't. An example of this is a technique called orthokeratology, a reshaping of the eye to correct its focus for young children from the ages of eight to 18, specifically useful in myopia control. Another important pillar of our business is behavioral optometry and our ability to train a person's eyeball coordination, visual uh, function and processing and perception to read properly. So lots of kids have reading problems that they don't necessarily need glasses for. They need a more attentive care and management and behavioral optometry encompasses those folks. It has various aspects to it. To briefly touch on those would be to say, Erlen tinted lenses, cell field intervention, vision therapy, syntonics, and interactive metronomes are ways that we can train a visual system of a person to be significantly better. Post-concussion syndrome, improving your sporting abilities, for example, things like shooting, like soccer. Coordination? Football. Coordination, totally. Another pillar of our business that we have would be the low vision services that we offer. So some people, no glasses can make it better anymore in their later life, and they need special attention with various equipment and technologies to help them see and function. So those three major pillars of our differences that we have uh, ways that we can provide a service that others can't. Yeah, to me that feels very different from some of the mainstream optometrist providers around New Zealand and, and those specialties of yours are, are very unique, aren't they? And very rewarding too, I think, for the outcomes that I know you're getting. If we were to think then about marketing specifically yep. and, and understanding the uniqueness and the history of the business that you've just described, yep. it's a pretty competitive marketplace out there, isn't it? And I know that you're one that is, uh, has been inundated with uh, some of the big international brands with some serious marketing resources behind them. Yes. You've been here a long time, and it really, it seems to me, just weathered the storm and carried on nicely. What have been the ways in which you've done that? What do you think have been the secrets to your marketing success that's maintained the successful business that you've got here? You make a great point when you're up against the big players with deep pockets, and if you're, if you're trying to beat the big players at their game, you're gonna lose. So isn't that game theory that says if if they don't like the game, change the rules. We simply don't do the same marketing that they would do, using more of the relationship marketing, which we focus on heavily, be it with our networking efforts to connect with people and find people to come into the practice, dealing with our patients on a personal level to really connect properly with them and help find that powerful word of mouth referral, which everybody's hunting for. And you can't get that if you're not doing a stand up job at the start. If you're not committed to the latest technology and the options to, and the ways that you can help a person with their eyes, their vision, then you can't offer what other people don't have. Thinking specifically then about some of your digital marketing, obviously you've got those points of difference around the technology you use, your customer care, which you concentrate very heavily on, and the database you've got and working that very extensively and keeping in close contact 
with your customers. Yeah. I know you run also a lot of events and you participate in fundraising events as well, which is a nice community aspect yeah. that you do. But in addition to that, your digital marketing has also been something I think that sets you apart. Tell us a bit about some of the activities you've been doing there. Okay, so in our digital space, we're, we've done the, uh, the time-honored tradition of having a website and keeping that spruced up and sharp. We try to make our website a place of knowledge base where people can come and learn about what we've talked about and, and if they're convinced that they can see what we're doing here and help them move in to make the appointment via the uh, website. We've got the uh, tr Facebook side of things that ticks along, we do varying promotions on Facebook and whatnot. We've got the Instagram side of things we've got going just more recently in the last year. Um, we've also got our emailing out to our patients to keep them informed of various seasonal trends and changes that are going on. It is amazing how much new stuff is happening every day uh, and communicating that to our database is, is a big challenge. Um, we can t we, it's so easy to tell them too much. You touched on some of the, the community sort of things that we do as well there. We've done school screenings, so we go in and screen the whole school. Um, sponsoring the football club or the golf club or these sorts of things where we've got our static marketing in place at the golf clubs. I noticed too with digital, you know, you're doing some things that possibly others aren't as much. Uh, you mentioned the website and being a, a, a resource really for your patients. So it's not really just a promotional platform at all, is it? It's, it's a deep dive learn a bit more. Um, and ways in which I've seen you do that include, obviously, you know, you've got strong brand and strong imagery to begin with, but you've used video pretty extensively as well, haven't you? When I think about something like behavioral optometry, yes. it's quite a complex idea to understand. And I know you've used video and testimonials from some of your clients. Yes. How's yeah. that gone? I would agree with you that video is a fantastic mechanism of very quickly getting a message across to our customers, our patients, helping them understand more complicated topics that they can understand in the moment of the appointment. So we've had uh, the video testimonials been uh, a way we've been able to share our patient successes. A lot of people find it difficult to believe that something as simple as what we're suggesting may make an impact for their child. But to see another parent and another child have the same struggle and have a fantastic success. So a child with, with real difficulty learning and to have that diagnosis, hang on, this is a vision issue and something that can be solved that way yeah. is quite a breakthrough, isn't it? It's counter to what the parents want to hear. They want to hear, the kids finally can see fine. We can rule the eyes out. Well, if you've got a problem with reading, you can't rule the eyes out. It's the eyes, it's the brain, it's the vision, the, it's the, the way The way the brain's wired too, right, which is yeah, quite a key part of it. So a way that often happens is that if a kid's got trouble with a reading problem, the parents can have trouble with reading problems. And so getting them to read a whole lot of pamphlets or read the website doesn't work. Right. So the power of the video promotion, educational videos we have, and the testimonials combined give the parent who is already struggling with reading, already time poor, they get the quick info, they get the live uh, video messaging. So the connection you've just yeah. made there is so often the parents actually undiagnosed have the same problem that the children do, right? Unfortunately, yeah, they're we're all products of our grandparents. Yes, yeah, yeah, therefore yeah. that visual communication, which is video in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, which is quite rich and immersive can really help to bridge that gap of knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's another tactic you've used. If I was to think about, um, you know, what would be your key pearls of wisdom, your advice to any business owner or manager who might be watching this video thinking, gosh, yeah. you know, um, what do I need to do to remain relevant and compete yeah. in the marketplace uh, with so much change, yeah. just as you guys have in, yeah. in your field? What would be the advice you would give? I think the advice that I would give to a company that's trying to work out whether they should do any marketing or more marketing is to, to, to try to find a way that's the opposite of what their competitors are doing, to find those niche points where they can specialize in, find their uniqueness, and carefully craft a way of getting that message out. Video is an excellent messaging way uh, to share your message this way. Uh, so I, I'm a firm supporter of video as a means of educating the patients. 
And you mentioned, you touched on social media earlier. Obviously, that's an area that businesses can no longer avoid. And, I, and we've certainly met plenty that initially were rolling their eyes going, gosh, do I need to? And now understand that it's unavoidable. Yeah. Um, what would be your advice here? Because obviously, again, you're heavily committed to, you mentioned Facebook, Instagram, I know you'll be on LinkedIn as well, that B2B connection. What you've got to what advice would you have around social and how people should approach that? We've had to recognise that different age categories and different demographics respond to different messagings in different platforms. Be it the newspaper for the, uh, the folks who still read the newspaper, be it the magazines for the people stuck in the waiting rooms around the place, be it the coffee news at the fish and chip shop, be it the Facebook for the uh, mums keeping an eye on their kids, be it the Instagram for the young ones, website to overarching reference point. You need to cast a wide net over multiple platforms to get your whole market demographic covered and integrating video and clear messaging along these lines will be a way to find some success. I guess what I could say overall, Hamish, is that with the strategy and the plan that we've got going with our marketing at the moment, it always needs a tweak here and there. It's never quite finished. It always needs more cash, it always needs more energy, it always needs another person to drive it. But one of the ways that we can judge that there has been some success for us is that across all of our demographics, we have still maintained growth over the years in all those different areas. So reflecting back on all of the marketing efforts that we've done from, uh, on our digital platforms, uh, on our um, static platforms, on our radio platforms, uh, we reckon that we've got success going with our marketing, with our plan that we've had in place, the grinding day-to-day -day working on the marketing all of the time, uh, we're busy, we're full, it's working. Yeah. Tim, thanks so much for your participation today in The Marketing Show. We sure. really appreciate your time. Excellent, thanks for having me. That's the latest episode of the Quest Marketing Show. Thanks so much for being with us here today. Remember, you can get the full interview via podcast, so check out our website. We'd also love to hear from you and about your key marketing challenges. See you next time on The Marketing Show. This episode of The Marketing Show is brought to you by Quest. New Zealand's most respected digital marketing agency, where marketing is made easy.